This is Irene from Brainstorm Acres, and we're doing a garden update. This is a first for us. We've never grown broad beans before. They're also called fava beans in the United States. And there's a cucumber beetle, which I just squashed, yum. Anyway. <laughs> the fighting flies this, more are, I, this morning are amazing. I had on shorts earlier and I couldn't swat fast enough to keep them from biting me. So I may be wiggling around a bunch today. These have flowers on them and have had flowers on them for, geez, I don't know, I wanna say a month. Um, we have not seen anything that resembles a bean yet on them. Uh, they certainly have had plenty of bugs crawling on them, so they should be doing something, but I can't tell whether something's eating them or what. Uh, earlier we had some flea, bean, some flea beetle problems, um, and I can see here that a squash bug has laid eggs on here, which I will take care of. Henry, do you want to get a close-up of some of these squash? Uh... Oh, goody, this is a... <laughs> and we have a friendly ladybug. That's a good thing. Learning to recognize bug eggs on your plants is a really important part of gardening. Uh, I just probably destroyed 100 eggs for uh, squash beetles, sort of. I mean, squash bugs. So. We've discovered that they actually like to lay their eggs on the windows here a lot of times. And if I go around on the windows and just scrape them off with my thumbnail or something else if you don't like doing it with your fingers, um, I, we're eliminating tons and tons of little beggars. Um, anyway, so this is the fava beans. We also have a volunteer dill in the middle of it. Oh, I think we have a bean. We do. So that means we have at least one. Um, hopefully some other ones have been hiding here and I just haven't noticed them. Uh, when you're growing something for the first time, it's always a little hard to know what things are gonna look like. Squashing cucumber beetles while we're talking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's another thing I do is I squash a lot of bugs by hand. To me, if you're gonna be a gardener, you gotta be into the concept of squashing bugs by hand because a lot of times squashing bugs really makes a big difference. Uh, we don't use any kind of pesticides or herbicides in the garden, except for some natural ones. And I try not to use anything if I can avoid it. So if simply squashing a few bugs will make a difference, I'm really good with that. Okay, uh, rhubarb is still managing to stay alive, uh, not doing great. I really need to move it, and that is definitely a fall project for us this year. We had a bunch of peppers and now we have some tomatoes planted down here. Uh, we've lost most of the peppers that was down here to rats, but I do have a couple of pepper, uh, tomatoes down here. I may wind up with another tomato down here because we've lost so many peppers, I might as well plant something down here. Down at this end of the bed, I have candy onions. Unfortunately, one of them has got a, a uh, flower on it. I'm gonna cut that off and see if I can stop him from flowering. Um, got a bunch of parsnip, and I've recently planted uh, carrots, but I can tell by the ground here that it's too dry. So I need to up the amount of water going to this. I just upped it yesterday, so we'll see if that's enough. This one is mostly tomatoes. Uh, there's some peppers down at this end, and some more than a mist at the very end, flowers. Um, these have done pretty well, and we lost two to rats. Although one of them we actually may have lost to a caterpillar or some other kind of bug. I actually caught a giant caterpillar wandering in here the other night. I just happened to be, I just happened to see him. He was un unlucky enough to have been walking up the side of the, the uh, bed when I came out to check things at bedtime. And um, needless to say, I squashed him. Uh, because a giant caterpillar like this guy, I mean, he was, you know, three inches long. He could easily mow down a pepper plant 
And, uh, but the other one was just plain taken, so I suspect that was probably a rat. That's what usually happens around here when we get rats, is they just literally cut the plant off. They actually did that with one of our peppers. They took such a large chunk out of it that the, I mean, uh, tomatoes rather, they actually took such a large chunk out of it that there was nothing left of the stem. We have the top of that plant in the house right now. We're trying to see if we can get it to root, because if we can, we'll put it back out and give it a second try. <laughs> Uh, but most of our tomatoes in here are doing pretty well. Um, a bunch of them have flowers on them now. Um, I need to go through and remove suckers again and give it a little bit more fertilizer. But uh, they're generally doing pretty well. And I have this one all buttoned up. I'll be buttoning the other ones back up again when I'm done. Somebody bit the top of this guy out. Uh, fortunately, it was just that part. <laughs> so there's plenty of pepper left, tomato left, except they took the runner, which is always a problem. Uh, but there is a little bit of fruit on some of the tomatoes here. There's uh, actually a baby fruit here. <laughs> so I need to plant, uh, I need to run another lot water line in here uh, because I have some basil and some um, parsley that needs to go in here. So yeah, I'll be, uh, before I close this up today, I'll go ahead and plant that stuff. Bind weed again down here. There's nothing we can do to get rid of this. This is the plague. It's actually a form of morning glory and it is considered to be a major agricultural plague in Arizona. Once you have it, and we didn't have it, birds brought it in. Once you have it, you will never get rid of it. And although I don't believe in Roundup, not even Roundup touches the stuff, and I suspect it's because it was probably used in the fields for the agricultural products for so long. It's actually a pretty, it's actually a pretty weed, but man, it just chokes everything to death. Oh, he's busy looking for critters. He's over there sniffing really strong. Yeah, it's probably, well, the bunnies come right up there. And it's probably either a rodent or... Yeah. yeah, I can hear him snorting to clear his sinuses. <laughs> hey, Jack, did you find somebody? Did you find somebody? Is there a lizard in there or is there a rat? This is our volunteer uh, bachelor button. Um, it has come up in this area three or four years in a row. Obviously, I never planted a bachelor button over here. I don't know whether it's coming back from the same roots or whether it's just seeding down the same spots, but... I just let it go. I figure anybody who can manage to survive out in the path gets to stay. These bachelor buttons were all volunteers too. They were originally planted up against the house. This got flopped over by the wind the other day. We had one of those nasty wind storms. But this poor thing is a rhubarb. It is, as usual, hating the summer. But I have... This section of the garden is going to be completely rebuilt next year. It is not currently protected from gophers. Fortunately, they don't seem to like rhubarb. Um, but I have a bunch of uh, dianthus in here, and I want to get that all protected. I just didn't have time this year, so I had to decide what I was going to protect. Now, these plants here are loving a mist, and they were volunteers from last year. They just reseeded over here. Um, and because the section of the garden is not being watered, they're kind of fading out now. But this section here is a f the formal garden. Uh, I still need to add some more irrigation. Some of the plants are not getting quite enough water. My cosmos in the back are wilting. So I need to run another irrigation line back there. But um, got marigolds up front, zinnias in the middle, and cosmos in the back. So, and we've got hollyhocks over here. Uh, it's been a long time since I've grown hollyhocks from seed. I usually just let them free seed, but they frequently don't free seed someplace useful. So I decided I would plop a couple there, and uh, that'll encourage them to seed in this area. Some of these are just flopped over because they're, we had wind, but there's others that need more water, so I need to run another line this morning. It's on my have to do before lunch project list.
come get a picture of a bean, Henry, just in case. <laughs> Could be gone tomorrow. <laughs>